Mm -hmm. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, uh, welcome to the uh, doctoral thesis defense of Carlos Eduardo Sanchez Perez. And uh, I thank the, the committee members uh, for their time to uh, to take part of the defense and reading the document and discussion that's going to follow. I want to thank uh, Professor David Nam, Professor Seth Negron, Professor Tony Thompson, Professor Paulo uh, Roberto de Souza Mendes for, for your availability, especially for David. He's awake at 2 a.m. in the morning to, to participate. But I think your participation was going to be very, very important from when you came to visit. We discussed a lot uh, some of, of, of the work, so I think your, your input is going to be uh, very important. So thank you very much for, for your time. We are uh, ready to go. Thank you some technical uh, problems here for sharing the screen. So Carlos is working. Okay. You still need to share the screen. Okay, so you can all see the screen. Okay, we are ready to go. Go ahead, Carlos. So you you give your presentation, then we'll be followed by, by questions. Okay, thank you so much for the introduction. And my name is Carlos, I'm a PhD student. So, this is my PhD defense entitled Microscope Flows of Exotic Liquids. Uh, my advisor is Professor Manso Cavallo, and my co advisor is Dr. Daniel Massa. Before starting, I'd like to thank you uh, for being here and for your attention. Oh, we have another issue sharing the This is a summary of the presentation. Firstly, we have a, an introduction with the, the motivation, conceptual background, and the objective. Then we have the literature review about exotropic modeling, uh, then the computational solution, and, cha and chapter four and five are the results. Firstly, we have the flow through a constricted capillary, then a slow protein modeling, and the last chapter is about the final remarks and the future work. And there are many complex liquids in industry with important applications that, that cannot be described by simple relationships between stress and rate of strain. For example, some of these liquids are time dependent. This is the case of, of particle suspensions. Uh, and a, a particular application of this kind of liquids is a, a, a scoping and the production of the battery electrons. And the most common behavior of non-Newtonian liquids is the non-linear variation of uh, the stress with shear rate. So according to this principle, uh, non-Newtonian liquids can be subdivided into three groups. Firstly, we have the shear ceiling, or pseudoplastic liquids, where the viscosity decreases as uh, increase the shear rate. The other group is a uh, shear thickening or dilatant. This is the opposite behavior of shear uh, thickening. These behaviors can be modeled by the power law and Carolla Suda uh, models. The, the third group is the viscoplastic uh, liquids. In this case, it's necessary to overcome a uh, minimum uh, stress or the yield stress to allow the liquid to, to start flowing. The most basic uh, liquid in this uh, category is a big hand uh, plastic. And in a most uh, general fashion, we use uh, Hershey bucket. Um, the, the flow curve that I showed before can be done by using, for example, the viscosity can be measured by using a rotational ferrometer. 
In this case, uh, the shear rate is, is fixed, and in the most uh, simple non-Newtonian liquids, the, the system is stabilized uh, very quickly, almost instantaneously. But in most uh, complex uh, liquids, uh, for example, in particle suspensions, like the red mood suspension that we have here at the right, is required uh, much more time to obtain a stable values in viscosity. For example, for the lowest uh, Chia rate here, 3.5, is about 2,000 seconds to, to achieve a, a stable value. So we can say that the many, many particle suspension show a, a, both a viscosity dependence in shear rate and time. And this time dependency uh, is associated with the evolution of the liquid microstructure, which is originated by the interaction of the solid particles. This is an example of time dependent liquids and exotropy. So the viscosity uh, decreases as the liquid is under checking or sharing. For example, here uh, at your left, we have a fully extract exotropic material that is not flowing, but this lead material is under checking or sharing. Eventually, it starts flowing and the microstructure uh, will be destroyed. Since this process is reversible, if this liquid is allowed to rest, the initial microstructure will be recovered when the liquid stops uh, flowing. Other uh, parameters which influence the, the flow is the shear history. For example, here at the right, we have two slurries, a slurry A, which is highly exotropic, and a slurry B, which is uh, time independent. In the case of the slurry B, no matter is the, we increase the shear rate or we decrease the shear rate, the flow curve is the same. But in the case of the slurry A, we have two curves. One as the shear rate increase, and the other one as the shear rate decrease. Despite the time dependency of a particle suspension, we are usually modeled by using generalized uh, Newtonian models, where time, uh, time dependency is not considered. So in this case, they, uh, don't, they don't, don't take into account the time required for growth to one microstructure level to another. Uh, in this case, we have a comparison between uh, the viscosity measured in a lab and the viscosity predicted by a generalized uh, neutronal model. In this case, this is a Caro de Asuda model. So in the first stage, we have a big apples in microstructure. And you are able to see that uh, there is a no good agreement between the experimental data and the day or the value given by the generalized Newtonian model. Just in about 2,000 seconds, we are able to see that the generalized Newtonian model achieved the, the experimental data. In the other uh, two stages, in the second stage and third stage, which is uh, the breakdown of the microstructure, we see that we have a good agreement between the experimenta and the data calculated. In this case, the average time is much shorter than the construction time. But it's, it's quite arbitrary to establish if the characteristic time of the liquid is short or large, so it's better to establish a time of reference. This time of reference to be the resident time of the liquids. Um, the ratio between the characteristic time of the liquid and the resident time is the pixotopy uh, number. We have brought uh, two scales uh, flows, two geometries. Firstly, we have the, the flows, what was the capillary, 
And the second one is an industrial application. This is a slot coating. And the resonance times in this case is usually very short. So to determine the importance of a thixotropy, we compare the results for given by a thixotropic model and generalized Newtonian model. Um, in the case of the first geometry, in this piece of e simplicity, we have firstly a region where we have a fully developed uh, flow and equilibrium condition. But in this equilibrium, we have a perturbation of this equilibrium in the constriction. And the behavior of the liquid could be different according to the model that we are using to describe the flow. Um, in the slow coating or in coating, we have a deposition of a liquid onto a moving a surface, solid surface. So in this case, the liquid goes from the fit slope, then goes for a region uh, bounded by the, the slot dies and the, uh, the, the moving substrate. We also have uh, two free surfaces. In case that we require to have a uh, a single field deposited on the solid is required uh, to apply vacuum. This is one the, the upstream three surfaces, while the other one is uh, as the liquid goes outside of the downstream slow time. So we have the downstream uh, three surface. Uh, the objective of uh, the thesis was a uh, analysis of a small scale flow of the exotropic liquids and determine the range of parameters at which the time dependent effect leads to inaccurate results. And the second one is to use a isotopic modeling and a generalized Newtonian model into a small scale steady state flows of Newtonian suspension, which exceeds shear uh, seeming and exotropy. Here we have a um, literature review about exotropic modeling. So traditionally, um, in a exotropic modeling involves uh, the use of a structural parameter. This is parameter uh, lambda. And this parameter measures, measures the microtubing level of the material and also relates the microstructure endeavor with the work biological uh, parameters of the liquids. So in the most traditional models, the, the, the structural kinetic models, uh, we have two equations. So firstly, in the first equation, the stress equation relates the stress with the structure parameter and shear rate. The second equation is the evolution equation of the structure parameter. And the structure parameter ranges uh, from zero to one. Zero for a fully and structure material and one for a fully uh, structure material. Then you can see this, this is a table with uh, different parameters according to the also so it's difficult to establish uh, what parameters are appropriate for uh, determining a, for a particular liquid. So these parameters are very empirical. And in order to try to unify the, the models that I showed before, uh, works like those proposed by Professor Sosa Mendes mm -hmm. and Thompson. Uh, they propose a constitutive model based on a mechanical analog. This is a Jeffrey's mechanical analog, the mechanical analog A, which is able to describe the uh, exotopic liquids <coughs> with viscoelastic uh, features. In our case, we are focused on inelastic exotopic liquids. So here we have a simplification of the, the stress equation. While in the evolution equation of 
uh, the capture parameter, the speed function f, depends on stress, the state of stress, since the interparticle bonding forces is, depends on stress. Um, since the, the capture parameter is just an auxiliary variable, it's better to use a parameter that we can measure directly. This parameter is a fluidity, which is just the reciprocal of viscosity. So, Professor Sosa Mendes and Doso proposed a model in 2018 based on fluidity. In this case, for a uh, in the last uh, isotopic liquid, we have um, a mechanical analog, and we have in parallel the structural fluidity and fluidity infinity. The structural uh, fluidity depends on the microscopic structure level of the material, and fluidity infinity corresponds to the fluidity for a fully unstructured liquid. Then we have a fluidity zero which corresponds to the fluidity for a fully structured material. So the fluidity ranges for fluidity zero and fluidity infinity. Here we have uh, fluidity, the normalized fluidity. Uh, is the, at the end of the slides, which can be used directly to describe the structuring level of the material. And it ranges from zero to one. Zero, for a fully extracted material and one for a fully unstructured material. In, in the model, we have two equations. In this case, this, uh, the first equation, the stress equation, corresponds to um, inelastic liquid. So the, the parameters uh, inside for here correspond to viscosity which depends on the local fluidity. And the local fluidity depends on the specifically in the Lagrangian frames of reference. Then we have the evolution equation for fluidity, where the function F depends on the stress, state of strain, since the microstructure is associated with bonding forces. The fluidity evolution equation can be different through periodical characterization. So, as a reference liquids, we have a laconine suspension. So, in case that we have, we like to, to, to have a flow curve or a steady, a steady state curve, it's required to wait uh, enough time to achieve uh, stable values in this process. Is in this case, is it was imposed a stress. So, if the, if we have different points for this, uh, for the flow curve, it's possible to have uh, the curve that we have here. So, for convenience, it was plotted the normalized equilibrium fluidity in the ratio of stresses. One is the actual stress, and the other one is the gene stress. We are able to see that we have two Newtonian plateaus. So in the case that we have uh, low values in stress, we have a material which is highly structured and his viscosity is high. Remember that fluidity is the reciprocal of viscosity. Then as the stress increases, the microstructure level of the material decreases. And uh, eventually, when the normalized equilibrium fluidity tends to one, we have a fully unstructured material. Then, by curve fitting, it's obtained as expression for the normalized equilibrium fluidity. And uh, this uh, function F is a heavy side function. Then, on the red uh, square, you can see the periodical parameter for the laconic suspension. Use in the in the work some in this thoughts. In, in case you obtain the, the function F for the evolution equation for fluidity, is required to perform other experiments. Uh, the experiments are called stress exchange experiments. So firstly, we have the catch up in up experiments. 
So initially here, at you, at your left, uh, we have a liquid flowing at steady state condition. But suddenly it's stressed, it decreases sometimes below to the real stress. Then the tension with form of the liquid is measured and is achieved a final uh, equilibrium uh, at the end of the study. So here it's difficult to see, but we have, according to the equilibrium achieved at the end, we have, according to the colors, we have different curves which nicely collapse on the red one, which is was obtained by feet, that feet. Then by differentiation, it's possible to obtain the, the second part of the, the function of F from the equilibrium fluidity to one. And the characteristic time here is the construction time. The, then we have the structure destruction experiment. So you can see here on uh, the left that we have a material that is not flowing and its stress is below to the real stress. But suddenly its stress is increased above to the real stress. So it's allowed to the liquid to start flowing and to achieve an equilibrium condition. The tension with pump is measured. And then you can see it, uh, according to the equilibrium achieved, we have different curves. So the, by curve fitting is an expression uh, here uh, in the right part of the slides. By differentiation, it's possible to obtain the first part of the function F from zero to the equilibrium the fluidity. In this case, uh, TA corresponds to the avalanche time, while S is an exponent which depends on the normalized equilibrium fluidity. This is a summary of the, the model. We have the constitutive equation, we have the fluidity evolution equation with the parameters, corresponding parameters. It's very important to notice that the function F is for a particular liquid, in this case, an aponite suspension. So in case that we have all the liquid, it's required to perform all the experiments to obtain the functionality of the function F. Here is a computational solution. So we have a summary of the covariant differential equations. So in case that we have a generalized Newtonian model, we only need the mass and momentum conservation equation in case that we have a domain with fixed boundaries. So we need here and the appropriate uh, Viscosity at a steady state condition, right? for example, a generalized Newtonian model, uh, we use the, the equilibrium fluidity proposed by Professor Sosa Mendes and us. It's, it's, it's good to, to clarify that in the thesis, it was used the, the model proposed by Professor Sosa Mendes and also based on fluidity. In the case of pixotropic flows, is it's necessary to include uh, another uh, differential equation. This is a fluidity evolution equation in the Lagrangian frame of reference. Then it was uh, used uh, the five element method uh, to solve uh, the, the equations here. So the domain is discretized in a finite number of elements. This is the name of the methods. So in the case of uh, free surfaces, the position of the free surfaces is unknown. So this is part of the problem to be solved. So uh, it's used a computational uh, domain, and this computational domain is linked with the physical domain by using a direct mapping here. But it's required to to estimate the inverse mapping. The inverse mapping is estimated by using the, these elliptical differential equations. 
According to the final NML uh, method, we have uh, residual weighted equations in an integral form. Um, the vector of unknown C should satisfy this uh, condition as R C P is equal to zero. And the nonlinear system of equation is solved by the Newton's method. Here, uh, our first results, which corresponds to a flow through a completed capillary. So, in the reology, we use the reological model proposed by Professor Sosa Mendes. Uh, here, the laponite suspension used as a reference to stop uh, liquid. But in this case, to ease the convergence of the Newton's methods, the heat stress was set equal to zero. Then we compare viscosity the uh, fields and pressure drops given by those models, the tixotopic model and the generalized Newtonian model. Then here we have uh, at the bottom, we have the tixotropic uh, number, the ratio between the characteristic time of the liquids and the resonance time. So as uh, the characteristic time of the liquid as a reference, we use the construction time. So we change this uh, number by firstly uh, fixing the resonance time of the liquid or the flow rate and uh, changing the, the construction time. Then we change the wiki, uh, the rheology, and we change the flow rates. In, uh, geometrical parameters that we use and the boundary conditions. For example, uh, the index we impose, uh, we assume that we have a fully developed condition, an uh, equilibrium equili equili condition, and we impose a volumetric flow rate coherent with the uh, rheology at the steady state condition. Then this velocity profile corresponds to a particular volumetric flow rate. Then we compare the pressure drops and the constriction given by two models, the tixotropic model and the generalized Newtonian model. So the ratio uh, of the pressure drops is uh, called uh, delta P bar. It's, uh, we are, can see this dimensional parameter. The other uh, dimensional less numbers are the pixotropy number and the dimension less wall stress, which is the stress of the flow in, the, uh, in this part of the, uh, of the capillary, the stress part of the capillary before the constriction. Uh, in, in this uh, result, uh, we it was fixed a constant uh, flow rate, so this uh, the dimension less uh, well stress is equal. So you can see here it's three point eighty two, but we change the um, the characteristic time. We change the rheology. So for convenience, it was set the avalanche time equal to the construction time. So we have here an hypothetical, or hypothetical limits. So uh, you, at the left, we have a plot where we have, uh, that was plotted the ratio in pressure dot versus the pixotopic number. So in case that we have large pixotopy numbers, the Delta, delta P bar tend to achieve a maximum value. But as the this pixotropy uh, number tends to decrease, the time dependent effects uh, decreases until time they become uh, negligible. To explain this graph, the graph at the left, we have two 
uh, viscosity fix. One viscosity fix corresponds to a fixotropic model, and the other one is given obtained from the generalized Newtonian model. And the the theory of fixotropic model corresponds to a very large fixotropic number. Before the constriction, the values in viscosity are the same since we have an equilibrium condition. So before the constriction, the viscosity just depends on the shear stress. So at the bottom, we have the highest values in viscosity when we have the lowest values in stress. While at the top, since we have the highest values in stress, the viscosity is the lowest. But at the constriction, we have a uh, equilibrium is we have a perturbation of the equilibrium and we have a constant change of in the stress. So for a generalized Newtonian model where is a uh, the time dependency is not considered, uh, is predicted a, a instantaneous response of the liquid as the stress changes. For example, in the in the converging part of the constriction, we have a uh, structure of the microstructure, which is reflected with a lowering in values in viscosity. Then, in the diverging part of the constriction, the viscosity values are recovered. But in the case of the isotopic liquid, it requires time to accommodate itself to the new uh, uh, conditions at the first reach. So in this case, very large uh, uh, isotopic number is not possible. To, to study the phenomenon with more detail, uh, it's, it's better to use uh, the viscosity at the capillary wall, since the, the pressure job is mainly due to the friction between the liquid and the solid particles at the wall. So, as you can see here, for very large uh, uh, isotropic numbers, uh, the viscosity predicted by the isotropic model is much higher than that given by the generalized Newtonian model. But as the, the isotropy uh, number increases, you can see that the values given by both models are similar. For example, in the red uh, curve, which corresponds to the lambdas equal to 0 0.22, we have a good match between the generalized isotopic model and the isotopic model. Um, in this case, we, we have the same reality, which corresponds to a uh, lacuna suspension. So the average time depends on the Normalize equilibrium fluidity and the construction time uh, were fixed in 663 seconds. So, but the, the resistance time of the flow rate was changed. So, both uh, parameters, land and tau, changes and the flow rate changes. So, imagine that we have initially a very small uh, flow rate. So, the time dependent effects are negligible. And then the P bar is about one. But as the flow rate increases, the time dependent effects uh, become important. For example, in the case uh, C, you can see here that the isotopy model uh, predicts higher values, the viscosity in the constriction compared to those given by the generalized Newtonian model. If we keep increasing the flow rate, um, the time dependent effects increases as well until achieving a maximum. This maximum is about uh, tau is about one, it's a little higher than one. So in the case of B, you can see that we have the close who has the highest values in the highest difference between the pressure flow given for the isotopic and the general isotonium model is about 45%. Um, 
after passing the maximum uh, value here, you can see that the, the tendency uh, is reversed. So as uh, we increase the flow rate, the time dependent effects decreases. So the microstructure in there in this case decreases as well uh, until achieving the, the case A, where the liquid is fully an extraction uh, at the capillary wall. So the, the, there is no changes in viscosity, but here by the two uh, models, see the viscosity tend to achieve a minimum value. So in case uh, we have a very large uh, isotopy number, uh, despite uh, this condition, the, the liquid tend to achieve or oh, is highly unstructured. So the viscosity tends to achieve a minimum value. So the, the viscosity or the time dependent effects are more important. In the other case, if we have very uh, small uh, exotope in a uh, number, the, the liquid have enough time to accumulate itself or to achieve a steady state condition. Um, we couldn't obtain the values or the result on the dashed line due to the convergence of the Newton's method. But uh, this is the same behavior by which was discussed by Yamal in 2022 which show uh, that the pronounced exotropic and stereotypic uh, effect occur in the intermediate values of the mutation number. The mutation number is the reciprocal of the exotropic number uh, shown here. As a conclusion in this part of the results, we see that the exotropic model tends to uh, give higher pressure drop compared to the generalized Newtonian model. So uh, if we use a generalized Newtonian model to describe the apixotopy flow, we can, we can have uh, significant errors. They could, they could be about 50% in some range of flow parameters. However, in, under two circumstances, uh, delta P bar could be about one in case that we have low enough uh, flow rate so uh, there could be, for example, uh, a small cap, uh, isotopic number allowing the liquid to uh, achieve a, a condition, a equilibrium condition. In the other case, for high enough uh, flow rate, it tells the high enough, which is leading to a fully uh, unstructured liquid. And the viscosity at the capillary wall almost doesn't check it. Then we, we have here in the slow coating uh, modeling the, the second set of the results. So um, here we have the geometry at the boundary conditions. So initially we have the feed slot and we assuming that we have a fully developed flow and equilibrium condition. And we fed a, a flow rate or a quantity of the liquid and we impose a velocity profile according to the reality and steady state condition. In the coating bits, when the liquid goes out of the so the fit is low, there is a change in the flow conditions, much higher levels of stress in the coating pit. Then you can see the, if we have the, the two three surfaces, one uh, upstream and the other downstream. Then we have the, the H, capital H, correspond to the coating gap, while the uh, small H correspond to the, the signals of the liquid deposited on the moving uh, surface. Uh, in the slow coating, 
the, the thickness of uh, edge just depends on the flow rate and the velocity of the moving substrate. An uh, important ratio here is the gap over thickness ratio, which is a uh, G, which is uh, the ratio between capital H of the, the curtain gap and the field thickness. The other parameters are the exotropy number and the capillary number. Um, here we have uh, the slow coating window and operating wind. So, in order to deliver a coating product with quality, it's necessary to work inside of in an area bounded by some limits. Uh, for example, this case in the, in the red line uh, at your right, we have the low flow limit, which is the minimum of the thinnest uh, thing that we can have on the, the coating uh, operation without having defects. Working beyond this limit, we can have an invasion of the downstream free surface into the coating bit. If we, we can have defects, for example, uh, like regulex. H0. It corresponds to the uh, field signal where we, we don't apply back. The other limits are established by the level of the vacuum pressure for a fixed value of the field thickness. So in case that the vacuum pressure is too low, uh, we can have a penetration of the upstream uh, Free surface into the fit slot. On the other hand, if the vacuum pressure is too high, uh, we can have a penetration of the coating bit into the vacuum chamber. So the, the highest vacuum pressure is defined by the dimensions of the flow that. Here, uh, we have some previous work in the slow coating, so it's difficult to establish these limits, even for Newtonian limits. But there is much more literature about it. For example, the works uh, the Higgins and Scriven, which presented the capillary model. Then we have the, the, the work by Carvalho and Kerchi, Suda uh, uses the power law. Uh, Incorporated in the visco capillary model, then co and create use the carbon model. Then the collaborators incorporated the visco elastic liquids. Then Sikar and Carvalho eh, determine the operability limits eh, for non colloidal suspensions. And John and collaborators discusses the use of slow coating without applying a eh, vacuum. So the, the logological model is very important in the definition of the parameters of the, in the operating wind. So in that case, we are using, we are comparing the pixotropic uh, model and, and, a, and a coating window given by mineralized Newtonian model. Most model, most results in this case were also obtained by setting the unit stress equal to zero. However, there are some examples where the unit stress is equal to six. And in, in the in the this were push. Um, here uh, we have a comparison of the uh, velocity profile. Velocity profile given uh, by the exotropic model and the general isotonic model a different water speeds so or the, the, the speed or the velocity of the moving substrate. So, uh, at g equal to 2. So, we, uh, the thin thickness is half of the coating gap. And this is a very special condition. Since in this condition, we, we have fully developed flow. And we have a pure wet flow, so the shear stress is a constant. 
and um, this explains the linear behavior of the generalized Newtonian models. But in the case of the exotropic model, um, we need to consider the time dependence of the leaf feature. For example, in the for a generalized Newtonian model, we can see that we have an instantaneous change of in the viscosity as the liquid goes from the fit slot to the protein base. In the case of the exotropic model, the liquid has no time to accommodate itself to the new conditions in the coating bit, for example, in this velocity, 25 millimeters per second. So the viscosity tends to be convected from the fit slot. Uh, there is just a linear or almost linear viscosity for the exotropy, according to the exotropy model, at the highest uh, weather speed study, 250 millimeters per second. So, since the velocity is high, we have a high flow rate. So, the stress is much higher in the fit slot. So, the liquid is highly unstructured. And the viscosity tends to achieve a minimum value. For this reason, there is no significant variation in viscosity in the coating bit downstream. So it's a point the almost linear behavior of uh, the results at 250 millimeter per second. According to the words of bit shown here, uh, the results were subdivided. So we have the lowest weather speed. A study to the rest of the result was 25 millimeters per second, and the other one 250 millimeters per second. Here we have an uh, operating video given by the generalized system model at uh, 25 millimeters per second. So we have three curves which define this uh, operating window. So we have a blue curve, which corresponds to the minimum value of this or vacuum vector that we can have, avoiding the invasion of the three free surface into the feature slot. The red line, it corresponds to the maximum vacuum pressure that we can have according to the dimensions of the slot guide avoiding invasion of the protein bit into the vacuum chamber. And the other values corresponds to the low flow limit. Where the, this, uh, the downstream the free surface is very curved. We have a penetration here in the, the downstream free surface into the protein bit. To explain a little more about how I build this uh, flow curve of the, the blue and the red line. So, uh, for example, we have a case A. This is an intermediate vacuum pressure. And the G here corresponds to equal to two. So, E equal to two. So, in case that we like to obtain the, the blue triangle, the vacuum pressure was decreased until that the position of the, the moving free surface is equal to zero. In the other case, the, the vacuum pressure was increased until the position of the moving free surface is equal to minus 1.5. Then to obtain other points on the in the curve, the vacuum pressure was set constant, and we decrease the the thin thickness or increase the value of G until achieving the value P of P, the result P. The procedure is repeated, so we decrease the vacuum pressure until achieving the the second a blue triangle and we increase the, the vacuum pressure until achieving the second red square. Then the procedure was repeated several times until 
that the Newton's method didn't converge due to the high curvature of the uh, downstream uh, free surface. So in this case, you can see that the G value is very optimistic according to the general Newtonian model. So it's very, very high, about 43. In this case, we have a comparison between the operating window given by the generalized Newtonian model and that obtained for the pixotropic model. So there are significant, very remarkable differences according to the operating window. Firstly, the value of the low flow limit are very different. In, in, for, according to the generalized Newtonian model, G is about 43, the limit maximum. Here, we could be about 10. The other difference is the exotropy model predicts higher vacuum pressures required. And also, I'm going to explain a little more in more detail in the, second, in the next slide, the, the form of the top curve here. So uh, the vacuum uh, pressure is higher according to the pixotropic uh, model. Since the viscosity <laughs> is higher than the vacuum box, we have here uh, the viscosity is converted, the same values of viscosity in the fixed slot uh, are converted into the vacuum uh, channel. So it's required higher values in, in, of the vacuum pressure. Uh, regarding other difference is the curvature of the, the free surface. So the pixotropic model that is higher, much higher pressure dot compared to that uh, for the generalized Newtonian model at this uh, uh, G equal to 10. So uh, in the case that we like to obtain uh, a, a, a seam film deposited on the solid surface, is required to have a adverse, adverse pressure. Uh, in the case of the um, exotopic model, uh, due to the high values of viscosity, this average pressure should be higher. Uh, this explains the higher curvature because it requires much higher pressure, uh, adverse pressure to fulfill this condition, the J equal to 10. Then, um, other particularity here is the experiences uh, about GB 5.5. So the, the top curve is this continuous, and we have two branches. On, in the first branch, this branch in, in cycle in green, we use the procedure that I showed before for the generalized Newtonian model. However, we're close to the discontinuity or here the discontinuity, the procedure fails. So it was difficult to obtain the second branch actually. So firstly, I obtained the low curve, the blue one, until the low flow limit. Then I increased the vacuum pressure to obtain a red square close to the low flow limit. And then the, the, the second branch of the curve was obtained backwards. So the vacuum pressure was increased until obtained these low uh, limits in the, in the discontinuity. In the vacuum pressure equal to 680. In the other case, we have, the, we have two solutions for the same parameters, flow parameters. So in the, in the top solution, we have a, a complex recirculation pattern uh, upstream. Uh, we also have the result at 250 millimeters per second. So we are able to see that there are, there are still significant differences between the operating windows given by the general Newtonian model and the pixotropic model. However, the differences are less compared to the previous case. 
We also have the Pegasus uh, phenomenon here. But uh, in the top uh, result, the complexity of the recirculation pattern is less compared to the case in uh, the lowest uh, velocity study, 25 millimeters per second. The conclusions in this part, we have the resort reveal that modeling a slow protein flow um, we using a generalized Newtonian model can be delivered or lead to very significant uh, errors, especially in the operating window. And also the dixotropic model predicts uh, the hysteretical uh, phenomenon which a generalized Newtonian model is not able to predict. And the most remarkable difference is given at the lowest uh, wet speed study, where we have uh, remarkable differences, for example, here in the low flow limit. Final remarks on future work. So two uh, small scale flows of thixotopic liquids were analyzed here through a constricted capillary and a slow coating process. Two neurological models were used, pixotopic, uh, pixotopic liquid or pixotopic model and the generalized Newtonian model. Uh, most uh, results show that the use of generalized Newtonian model to describe pixotropic flow could lead to significant errors. Uh, however, in some cases, if the pixotopic number is very large or very small, the time dependent effects could be negligible. Uh, the future work, experimental work, would be beneficial to validate properly the results that were obtained here. And also, it could be very interesting to run the simulations with other conditions uh, in other periodical parameters. Thank you so much. Thank you all for your attention. I'd like to thank also CNPK, Capis, and Bupi for the funding support in my research. Okay. Thank you, Tom, for your presentation. We will uh, start the uh, question by the committee.